What, what was what was your um, biggest transition from um, when when you started like in the door to door? What would you say like was your like like your most remarkable, memorable mm. transition in the door to door game? All right, so I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. Like you know, like I said, I've been selling, and I've told you guys many episodes. You know, I'm always broadcasting about different types of products, services, just all different types of things that I've sold. Um, and you know we're always selling like you said good looks and personality and charm you know but right. in reality though I think my biggest transition uh, within the industry altogether was when I went from actually selling a physical product for cash on hand to start selling services right. so it was like the biggest change for me because I'm like I went from a position where I was able to sell a product on hand give it to you you could feel it smell it hold it touch it you know what I'm saying and give me cash on hand right now so I went to having people sign up for services Right. And at this point, it was like I was now almost selling somebody something that they couldn't physically see, feel, touch, smell. <laughs> and I had to pretty much really use even more of my personality and right. my charm and my able ability to paint pictures. Right. And it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty crazy. So when I jumped into that type of industry, you know, um, and I started selling uh, services door to door, um, there's always one story that I always tell people. It's about motivation. It's about being able to go the extra mile. And I think when you're an entrepreneur or you're in any types of sales, you got to get in the habit of going the extra mile, going above and a call, up, going oh, above yeah. and above and beyond the call of duty, exactly. right? And doing more than anybody else. More importantly, doing more than yourself. Yeah. And you know, um, I'm a firm believer. Not to cut you off, my bad. I love that. I love that. Just what you said. And it's funny because, like, bro, another book that we definitely got to get together. Uh -huh. I had that book, but it's um, Dale Carnegie. It's called Leadership Mastery. There it goes. And he said that uh, a real leader is when you do more than what you pay to do. There it goes, right? You know what I'm saying? That's that's following, like, I, you know, I just had to bring that nah, up. No, for sure. Yeah, going the extra mile, bro. That's, that, that's, that's true, bro. I mean, it's really how I built my career. It's just by going above the call of duty. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Over-delivering, under-promising. You know what I'm saying? Just delivering Facts. more than what I said I'm going to do. And I remember there was this one time we had, like, uh, you know, I was always striving to be like what they call the high roller or the top producer right. in any location, any business that I did. That was always my goal. Whoever's the big dog, you know, I want to try to outbeat him every single day. Right. And I remember just being fresh in the business. I'm out there maybe my first, second, third, fourth week. I'm still getting the hang of this thing. I'm going out there. I'm learning how to do something new. But I still want to strive every day to be the high roller. So they would say like they would give us like a quota or a goal or, you know, something to shoot for every day. And it was like, let's say you got to do, you know, six services to be you know, on the list or to be, you know what I'm saying, uh, get recognition. Right. You know, my goal every day was to double that. I wanted to do 12 services. I wanted to be above the call of duty. They would call it, you know, to be on the high roll list, you got to do six. And my goal is to do 12. I want to be on the high roll list twice. Right. In fact, I want to be on the high roll list before lunch. <laughs> right. And then I want to do it again. You know what I'm saying? And there was one time where I was out there, I had already been on the high roll list. Uh, we used to have like a portal. I could pull up on the phone and see like what everybody was doing across the country. Right. So the company I was with, it was, you know, nationwide. It was everywhere. So there was locations everywhere. Every day I look at the portal and I'm like, damn, I'm on seven, somebody else on seven. I'm not getting I'm not going home until I get eight. Like that was my mentality. And I remember being out there one day, we hitting these buildings, three-story buildings, New York City, shout out to Yonkers. I was out there, it was snowing outside. I'm working in Yonkers. I'm going out there making it happen, going door to door. And uh, I'm knocking third floor. I'm already on the high roll list. I'm like tied. Number seven, I'm like at eight, eight services. Top guy got eight services. We out there grinding. I'm so still like tied with somebody else. Uh huh. Tied with somebody else. Eight services. I knock on the door. I'm talking to a lady. I interact with her. I explain to her the program that we offer, and she's super excited about it. She comes to the door. She got a baby. The baby is like maybe three, four years old. Really cute. So when we finish the service call, and the, and the person decides to make the sale, we got to make what they call a, a a a three a three part a TPV call. It's called that third party verification. Right. So we gotta make a TPV call, a third party verification call. We call the, the company, they gotta verify the information, agree to the sale. So we're on the call, but during the call, you can't have any interruptions. Anybody that's done door to door sales, TPV, you know it's the final step of the sale. Yeah. You make the phone call, but there can't be no interruptions in the background. You gotta be in a quiet room. You gotta be quiet. Yeah. So we have our doorstep. We're making the phone call, the baby comes out, mommy, mommy, mommy. I drop down with the baby, like, shh. pull up my phone, I start showing them something, you know, little, look at the pictures, look at Teletubbies, whatever it was, you know what I'm saying? Right. Showing them little pictures and shit, you right. know, little cartoon characters, boom, 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 check it out, be quiet. So then, while the baby's being quiet, mom's on the phone, she's making the phone call. I look over the baby's shoulder. Bro, I've seen the biggest Rottweiler I've ever seen in my life. You ever seen the movie Sandlot? <laughs> yeah. When they jump over the fence, big old cougar looking dog. Yo, that's how big this dog was, bro. So the dog jumped over the baby. 
When he jump over the baby, he jump on top of me. Now I'm on the third floor of steps. You ever seen the movie Home Alone? The kid's riding down the steps on the sled. So the dog was the kid, I was the sled. Dog's on top of me, chewing my arm crazy, like viciously. I'm talking about spit coming out of his mouth. He growling, snapping at me. I'm trying to shove my, my elbow in his mouth so he can't bite my face. I'm sliding down the steps. I get to the bottom. The father comes down. He come with a bat. He hitting the dog with the bat. He grabbed the dog. The father slips. I'm falling. The father busts his head on the side of the steps. So there's blood everywhere. I'm thinking it's my blood. I'm going crazy. I'm like, ah, the nigga tried to kill me. Dog went bananas. I'm freaking out. But I noticed I stood up. I had peed all over myself because the dog was like, no joke. My jacket's all ripped up. I had a blazer on. I'm trying to look cute. I'm at the door like you with the shirt and tie. Yeah. You feel me? But sneakers on. You feel me? That's how we did it. Door to door. Yeah. Professional from here to the ankles. Yeah. After that, you got sneakers on. Yeah. So I had the shirt and tie, the suit. I'm looking extra crispy. She tore my jacket up, tore my sleeve up, scraped my arm up. You know what I'm saying? And I peed on myself and there's blood everywhere. My shirt and everything. I thought it was my blood. I look at the father. He gushing out his head. He punched the dog a couple times, throw him in the cage. Now, because of the loud commotion, the TBV call it dropped. So the lady come out. She's like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I can't believe he did that to you. I can't believe he even did this again. They told us if the dog does it again, they're going to put him to sleep. Please don't call the cops. So in my head, I'm like, oh. So this is not the first time you try to kill somebody. <laughs> this, dog, this dog big chopping people's up. And you still got to run this cute little three-year-old baby. In my head, I'm like, nah, this, kid, this dog needs to get put to sleep. Right. Pops bleeding, I'm tore up, peed on myself, baby's crying, no TPD, I didn't get to make the sale. I'm like, look, miss, I'm not going to call the cops. That's not my type of thing. I ain't no 6 9 But we do got to make the phone call one more time. <laughs> so we make the phone call one more time. I get knife. That's my knife sale. Now I'm at the top of the leaderboard. I come outside. I see my team. They're like, yo, what the fuck happened to you? My arm shredded up like, like I turned into the Credible Hulk. My jacket's all ripped up. I peed on myself, and I got blood splattered everywhere. They're like, okay, what just happened in this building? I'm like, don't worry about it. Dog came, jumped on me, boom, boom, you know, fell on the steps, hit my head, he hit his head, he bleeding, I peed, crazy, but I still got the sale, we got number eight. They're like, damn, bro, that's crazy. We out to the bus, let's get out of here. I'm like, nah, hold on, bro. If I go home right now, I'm still going to have pee pants, I'm still going to have a ripped jacket, I'm still going to be blood splattered everywhere. Let's hit a couple more doors and let's get two more sales. I ended up getting at least three more that day. I did like 12 for the day. I rolled the whole building and I came the next day telling my story. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, it was just about going the extra mile, not giving up. It, to my eyes, it didn't matter if I went home right now or not. I still had pee. Right. You know what I'm saying? Let me hit my goal. Let me push harder. I went to the next door. I missed. They told me I had to come to you. I got bit by a dog. I peed on myself. I got blood everywhere. She was like, oh my God, okay, we got to get you home. Here, boom, boom. What I got to do? Next one, boom, 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 what I got to do? Now it became part of my pitch. I was at the door like, look, this is what happened. You know the big dog? Oh, I know that big dog. He shits on the sidewalk. Yeah, that's the dog I'm talking about. Tried to kill me. A couple more sales, boom, boom, boom. It was a crazy day, man. That's like one of my biggest stories about adversities, going the extra mile, and at the same time making a transition into a new type of career and a new type of focus, man. I know you got mad stories too, though, bro. That's bro, a fact, though. That's classic, bro. Hell yeah, no, that shit was crazy, bro. Bro, bro we got to make a movie. No, nah, that's a fact. That's crazy. Yeah, we got to get that's some of these episodes deep, in. Bro, you in too deep like LL. <laughs> oh, that was sick, bro. Bro. Yeah, you talking about inspiration, bro. That's, bro, I'm telling you. That's what I'm saying, bro. We built different, bro. We we cut from a different same cloth, bro. Because I don't <laughs> think nobody ever went through what we went through, bro. Nah. That's why I love that saying. Like, they said, if you put your problems on the table. Yeah. And somebody else put their problems on the table. Right. <clears throat> and if you look at your, they problems, you'll pick your problems up. No, nah, that's a fact. Man, I, I pitch your problems on the table. Oh man, my my girl just left me. Yeah. He put his problem on the table. Oh, my my baby is sick. Yeah. He put his problem on the table. I only got two weeks to live. Right. Oh shit, let me just pick my problems. Pick my up. problems back up. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? That's deep, bro. Yeah. So so my 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 one of my um. Nah, tell that one story we was talking about earlier that you was telling me. I told you you got to say that for the podcast. Tell yeah, me that. yeah. That, that's what I'm saying. One of my biggest, like, you know what I'm saying? Transition was, uh, and, and like I said, I'm turning this to a whole TV show. Mm -hmm. bro. We might as well join forces on that, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We could write and help each other with the dialogue and everything because this is true events. People look at us like, dang, they some great storytellers. No, we not notorious big. Yeah. But this really happened. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I got this episode called Suicide, right? So, um, this is like 2008, 7-ish, 2007 or 8, you know what I'm saying? Right. But, um, we was going door to door, and um, we was in, um, I remember like yesterday, we was in Medford, Oregon. Mm -hmm. So, in Oregon, 
they call it God's country, but it, it rains a lot out there. You know what I'm saying? So they like they like a lot of people say it's like a depressed state because it rains so much during the year. You feel me? People just be like, you know what I mean? They right. be going through it. So anyway, it was raining, and you know, I don't know if you know, like in the door to door industry, but a lot of people they lay downs. Salespeople they don't like working when it's raining. You know what I'm saying? Up. They start exactly. Every so excuse anyway, in the book. yeah, my goldfish died. Yeah, I swear, work yeah, they they got all type of they got all type of excuses. You know what I'm saying? I remember one day. One of my coworkers called the police on the cell. Like, yeah, you gotta come pick me up. Yeah, uh, um, I was like, bro, I can't come pick you up. He called me right back. Oh, the, the police here. What? The police here? <laughs> come to find out, he didn't call the police. Nine one one. Yeah, uh, Somebody, yeah. <laughs> this is uh, Terrell Jones. Um, you gotta come pick this guy up. He don't got no license. Um, he's black. He got on some blue pants. He got a uh, blue jean <laughs> shirt on. He got a white tee. He got a gap like the clothing line that um, Kanye was beefing with. Yeah, uh, you gotta come get him right now. He ain't got no license. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Just call the police on himself because he didn't want to work. Anyway, oh, make a long story short. So anyway, I already knew what I was up against. I had a whole team. Right. I was like Jesus Shuttleworth. You know what right. I'm saying? You saw he got game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was like the Jesus Shuttleworth a door to door this day. It was raining, right? Right. So anyway, make a long story short. So my team, you know what I'm saying? Like we used to have ten thirty meetings at night. You know what I'm saying? Like when we get off work, we'd talk about how the day went. You right. see what I'm saying? So it rained like it rained like back to back, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, I said, you know what? I'ma take my whole van to a door tomorrow. Right. Since y'all got more excuses than, you know what I'm saying? Excuses like asshole. Everybody right. got one. Right. But excuses lead to failure. I'm going to actually show you. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't going to never make you do nothing I didn't do. You see what I'm saying? Leadership. You can, you can follow someone to a restaurant and still start it if you follow the wrong no, leader. You know what I'm saying? Person, so right. anyway, to make a long story short, I said, look, I'm going to take y'all. So they would, they can wait till somebody was negative. You feel right. me? So the first door I knock on, lady come out. Snap. Right. You feel me? Like crack on pop, and this one rice crispy. She said, "Whatever you selling, get the hell off my property. I'm gonna call the fucking police." I said, "Well, sorry, I, ma'am. Jesus didn't sell everybody. We gonna see you around like a donut." Right, bro. When I tell you, as soon as I walked off her porch, and my team looked at me like they, you could tell they was about to laugh. Right, right. They like they looked at me like, "Yeah, I, I told you it's happening." To see, you thought it was lying, and the lady like she looked at me and like she, you could tell like she she had a smirk on her face. But she had a teardrop her eye. So I could tell, like, I I did something to put. Because she said, bro, can you imagine somebody snap on you in right. the rain? Right. And then you say, all I said was, look, well, Jesus didn't sell everybody. We're going to see you around like a donut. There you go. She smiled. But she had something like, damn, she 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 in pain or something. Right. There's something going on. You touched her. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, she said, you a Christian? I said, yes, ma'am. She's like, what are you selling? I said, I'm just selling good looks, charm, personality. Your neighbor thought I was a bill collector. I'm moving up. You know what I'm saying? There you go. She started busting out. I swear to God, my life. She started laughing. She was like, look, I'm so sorry. I wasn't expecting um, no door-to-door -door people to try to sell me anything. I'm, I'm just going through a rough time right now. I just lost my son in a car accident. She was like, I'm really sorry for, you know, going off on you guys. She was like, um... Next thing I know, she said, what, what are you selling? And then I start, I swear to God, I just start cleaning. I went back in the sales mall. I said, I, I, I thought you never actually see this. Because in um, Oregon, they got a lot of mold and mildew. Because like right. in the rain, the mold and mildew from the moisture and shit. So I start cleaning the mold and mildew, right? She said, wait, wait, I got this spot on my carpet. She said, clean mold off the carpet. I said, yeah. I said, leave me to it, watch me do it. So I walk in her house, bro. And I got like four or five guys with me. They follow me, right? But I was like, look, y'all stay right here. So I start walking in the house. They're like, no, we going in with you, feel right. me? So we walk in her house, bro. She got a gun on the table, Sheesh. right? I said, oh, don't shoot. I'm just a chocolate kid. I'm the good guy, not the bad guy like Chucky. She said, no, no, no. Let me tell you. She said, right before you knocked on my door, I was just about to kill myself when I heard the news my son died. She said, you just made my day. So thank God. And she was like, God sent you. Right. And she was like, but if you clean the spot, I'm going to buy it. Bro, I end up cleaning that spot. She bought like two bottles. Yeah. And we still friends to this day, bro. So I'm looking at like you never know what someone going to. Right. But that like that's why they say it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. And that's what I had to show my team. Right. I said, now look, what if this was one of y'all and y'all would have talked to her crazy? Right. She probably would have. Not right. only right. snapped on y'all, right. called the police, the police would have got there, arrested y'all for not having no license right. and being rude and would have found this lady dead. That snapped on herself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 